Hi friends, so we are here on uh, risk-based engineering course and uh, this module or this uh, lecture is on quantification of PRA model. Uh, in previous lecture we have discussed uh, qualitative analysis, we have created the excellent sequences and now we will discuss how the uh, uh, excellent sequences are quantified and finally it leads to the statement of core damage frequency. Uh, before that, uh, fault tree analysis also we will discuss and how uh, system unavailability is derived using the fault tree analysis. So this module is on quantification. The quantification, the scope of the uh, topic covered are data collection analysis, a very important component of uh, uh, PRA and uh, data can be uh, plant specific source, data from uh, similar plants, generic source, handbook approach for data collection. The handbook approach is more applicable for electronic component because there are international uh, internationally available uh, like uh, mill, mill standard 217 uh, is there F version is available. So that is used and uh, now mill 217 F an alternative approach that phys physics of failure approach is also there in the and um, there is a lot of advancement taking place but uh, we will discuss uh, later at, at present for this, uh, for this talk, we will discuss a uh, small uh, discussion on um, Bill Handbook 217 for one of the electronic components just to demonstrate the approach. Uh, then second part is uh, quantification. So estimation of unavailability estimate for, uh, for uh, at system level uh, and accident sequence quantification and then uncertainty estimation. So these three will be touched upon and then finally quantitative estimates of core damage frequency uh, which will be the um, final uh, final uh, stage of uh, quantification. Now plant specific data is uh, uh, if we collect from the plant uh, basically uh, the in nutshell we, d we have to develop a uh, format uh, which should be supplied to the uh, ground staff and intermediate level or management level, lower management, uh, upper management level people so that a data is analyzed and weighted properly and finally it finds its uh, uh, place into the uh, our analysis. Second thing is quality assurance program should be instituted for the uh, data and of course um, if the data collection happens it has to happen through a, a computerized program. Uh, the computer in, uh, input from the field data uh, which comes to um, uh, filtering uh, and for refinement then it comes to the PRA desk uh, for uh, seeing that rare, uh, raw data into, a, a, into the final data uh, and final reliability database which can be linked to the PRA software is available. Now uh, the kind of data that we need basically uh, uh, is basically an analysis is one component of uh, database and then uh, we require a classification of the uh, data in terms of safe, unsafe or it is a common cause failure or it is a human error and uh, finally uh, database uh, indi for individual component uh, we should be able to see uh, what is its uh, common cause contribution, what is its individual component uh, or you know independent failure, uh, failure data. Uh, normally failure rate, uh, failure probability, uh, test interval, uh, these are the data maintenance uh, frequency and all they will be there in the uh, database for each component. Uh, component specification also form part of the database, why? Because unless until specification is there, I will not be able to um, match uh, uh, where to use this data actually. So it is, it helps if we have a component specification like a diesel generator uh, having a uh, 400 kilowatt rating and a diesel generator having a 5 kilowatt rating, they may not match in terms of data uh, because the specifications are not matching the loading, the maintenance, uh, the kind of upkeep we do, uh, they will be different for these two days. Uh, so safety related component, non-safety related component. So these two, uh, they matter a lot the kind of attention they get. So data has to be and data specification has to be perfect when we go for a data that uh, can be used in the analysis. Now uh, uh, there are examples uh, here, plant, uh, plant specific data management and uh, categorization and analysis. Uh, there is a database which has been developed reliability data and information management system. And uh, there the component coding is a very critical component because that is a key uh, that connects to various other aspects of uh, database or other databases. So uh, the data uh, analysis uh, happens 
at the pre processing level where raw data uh, uh, and information is obtained from the plant then categorization of the uh, component is uh, done at the second stage and third stage reliability estimation is done and final data ready made for pra uh, that is available so these are the three major steps uh, that we have to see and as i mentioned the uh, coding of the database is very important and it has to be done in a manner uh, for the projected use uh, i have given a simple coding uh, for one component which is uh, which is uh, typically it can be used uh, is like uh, uh, which plant uh, two digits are uh, total 11 digits are there two digits are uh, referred for the plant because when pra is done for uh, similar plants we should have uh, the plant coding also so here it is a p1 uh, p1 system then system this system we are to emergency cooling then uh, type uh, 5 and 6 it is reserved for what type of uh, data it is it is a pc okay and name is uh, injection pump so it is a primary uh, the, the uh, pump centrifugal pump okay, pump centrifugal and it is injection it is its function is injection pump in the plant nominal culture it is called injection pump and then plant designation uh, it is 0 1 plant designation means what is there uh, injection pump 0 1 like that you know and then the failure mode fail to start so uh, the, like, like we can see, see here the s stands for fail to start so once uh, the data uh, coding uh, has been done in a manner that in 11 digit all the information about the data is available it helps in the analysis uh, uh, and also in the results uh, calculation everywhere all the stages so coding should be done with lot of thinking and uh, you know uh, it should be done systematically so coding and because this key uh, for the component data will be used in many places to connect other data for other purpose also so that's why it provides a way for integration of the uh, component uh, data function and uh, as i was mentioning component failure modes this is a list i have picked up from uh, international atomic energy agency so you can see here i had used uh, there that uh, fail to start s is the thing i have used here so fail to start is a uh, uh, fail to start is an internationally accepted code. So, fail to start for that pump and that is centrifugal pump and that suppose for degradation we use B, um, the, then fail to change position we use. So, uh, everywhere you can see the keyword has been uh, picked up fail to remain in position D, uh, fail to close E. So, uh, again every, everywhere it is not that that keyword is missing but then uh, this is in line that all the alphabet letters have been used. Uh, along with some numerical values and all the failure modes have been defined okay so uh, this is a international coding uh, system derived from coding system you can uh, use it ready made you know now <coughs> generic data uh, whatever we do we cannot avoid the use of generic data and now i have taken a one simple example of um, generic data on batteries so uh, you can see here the kind of code that was developed it is it's named as btabn battery and component boundary in this database uh, include because component boundary is very important what comes in the component like when i say battery it will mean battery container terminal connection inclusive of uh, uh, first breaker contact you know first breaker contact that means battery is connected through breaker to other system so first breaker on any side this form the boundary then operating mode all sometimes standby sometime uh, stand uh, continuous so all for all operating mode it is giving the information and operating environment is normal and sometimes i would like to say if it is in reactor building it is ground benign you know and not seeing any harsh environment or special environment or chemicals generic failure mode is degraded uh, that has been uh, we have seen in our database original failure mo mode is inadequate output so that means at certain output the battery was declared fail so it is specific to that analysis uh, so here it is inadequate output if the battery was to generate uh, 3 volt it is generating uh, 1.8 or uh, uh, 2.5 or 2.7 whatever uh, is our failure criteria so failure mode is here uh, failure uh, rate of, and probability you can see here the uh, high probability is that is upper bound that what it is giving is uncertainty bound also so 7.5 into 10 to minus 6 per hour is the median value and the um, low, lower side uh, yeah uh, and the higher side 
uh, it is uh, sorry 3.2 into 10 to the minus 6 uh, is uh, the normal value then high value is 7.5 and low value is 4.9 okay so failure rate or failure probability we say mean value or recording value from the data is 3.2 to the minus 6 uh, high value is and this gives the probability bound now repair time in the specific location where the data has been sourced uh, it is 4 uh, to 7 hours is the repair time for these batteries uh, which they got from their database and op uh, operating or maintenance experience source NUREC 383 this is a document from there this data has been picked up year 98 so you can see an ultimate so sources operating experience plant record comment uh, there is a, always all the database should be uh, should find one special command which is related to so here they are giving the experience so operating experience is total population 51 operating time one uh, 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 1564 hours number of failures five so th with that we got this uh, the value and you will find that even generic data provide adequate uh, adequate information about the data and this helps us in uh, in uh, uh, aligning with our data what we want actually and like this on battery there will be 10 or 15 data points uh, we can choose which one is applying to our specification or our requirement so this is about generic data now in a uh, uh, final uh, data structure uh, typical or uh, data card whatever we have uh, what should be the information so this slide gives the component coding we have seen just now uh, name of the uh, component uh, mode of failure uh, and it belongs to which system so you can see uh, when we create the code all this information uh, you can see here component boundary is there type of service from their environment and all we can make out operating environment ground benign service harsh environment and uh, accumulation uh, operating experience then uh, accumulated demand and then failure rate so these are the uh, what 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 we are trying to say is even if we create a plant specific database this type of uh, information should be there an uncertainty bound lower bound and upper bound uh, name of the project uh, remark and if we are doing Bayesian updating probably we have discussed in uh, or we will discuss in detail Bayesian updating is basically if our operating experience is less then what we do is we go to the generic data uh, base uh, source as we have seen for the case of battery and uh, if I my question is on battery my small experience is combined with the uh, generic database experience and I uh, get a post ready that means the best estimate uh, what can be done and as our experience increases uh, the uh, dominating figure will be plant specific data it is normally called likelihood uh, estimate you know so and then uh, update data posterity so Bayesian updating is basically having this nomenclature uh, we'll see what mean in, uh, in this next uh, slides actually now we are talking about data but data are available for a specific domain for a specific purpose now let us say and it depends on what type of component it is it is a continuously operating component or standby component uh, so if it is a uh, continuously uh, standby component then it will be starting on demand so there will be a time independent factor will come there actually so uh, unavailability contribution from test duration so test duration means this is the time I am taking test uh, uh, test uh, investing in test and uh, test average duration and then uh, uh, this uh, TI is, is basically the test interval so these two together will give us component level availability and if there is a provision of overriding availability that also will get fraction also will get multiplied so uh, this is how for uh, standby component contribution from repair also it can happen so lambda s into that is standby into time to repair so this will also be get uh, so when we give a statement of unavailability so it will be tau divided by ti into q0 plus qr into if the contribution is scheduled from scheduled maintenance also then frequency of scheduled maintenance and time taken for maintenance so these three uh, uh, together they will give estimate of unavailability for the uh, standby component okay. now continuously operating component also non repairable component or mission mode component so here uh, one minus exponential minus we know that because we have studied uh, this exponential distribution and repair time is given by this model uh, that is 
lambda 0 into tr t t is tr is time to repair and this and sometimes these models are built in we have to just input the uh, lambda 0 and tr or tm value and the model will give this uh, estimate or we have to uh, we have to do manually actually and uh, directly input the unavailability uh, equations or uh, numbers now uh, in standby mode random failure uh, what i had given you was uh, repair maintenance and all but if it is a uh, test and uh, standby component then 1 minus 1 minus uh, e e exponential minus lambda ti divided by lambda ti and lambda uh, uh, s is standby failure rate ti uh, here i would say one thing uh, random failure sometimes it is uh, it is estimated as uh, q figure and but that is probability of failure and it is sometime total number of uh, uh, total number of failure divided by total number of demand and that is sometimes uh, equated to time domain things uh, like in terms of lambda and ti and all that so that uh, we, we will discuss how this approximation for random failure can be done it is generally for standby component half lambda st that is half if i solve this equation and with a uh, with a with a condition that uh, lambda value is too small then that uh, this thing certain uh, th so uh, failure rates are too small so then in that case that approximation is uh, available and generally uh, often we use that half lambda st for uh, q equating q q is demand failure probability that uh, we'll discuss so this so now now in fault tree the procedure we have discussed for diesel 1 diesel 2 and other breaker component and common cause failure uh, we have uh, got this value of uh, uh, probability okay so first we discuss their failure mode then then uh, how they, uh, uh, they should be recorded refined then how demand and and then we quantify and that's quanti quantification has been uh, reflected over here so let us say this is the input data uh, for this reduced fault tree which we used in um, qualitative analysis okay so th these two things are in front of us and let us see uh, we have data and uh, same table again for the sake of uh, clarity and all and then uh, estimate of class 3 availability is 3.2 to minus 3 so one interpretation here is direct uh, regulatory stipulation on class 3 or emergency power supply says that uh, it should it, it should be target value for class 3 power failure should be 1 into to minus 3 and whatever analysis or estimation we have done we got around 3.2 into to minus 3 it is slightly more than this but it is almost coming in the range so we can say our uh, our uh, emergency power system performance is uh, okay or satisfactory but further efforts are required in terms of test maintenance or maybe in terms of redundancy sometime at design value and ensure that it is less than 1 into to minus 3 uh, so so these are the direction we get uh, right from our uh, small efforts of making uh, fault tree inventory and our pra insight actually you know now uh, we know that 3.2 to transfer minus 3 we have estimated there actually uh, from an emergency power supply system i have used the same fault tree but i am having input for other events also for this i have estimated from the fault tree and now since i have all the quantification i have all the accident sequences um, simply i have to derive the uh, quantification for the accident sequences so uh, you i think you appreciate that the inventory remains same its frequency i have uh, introduced here then 3.2 tension minus primary shutdown system i have not done detailing because the scope doesn't allow us to go in and then sh secondary shutdown system you can see these two are redundant system but still both of them to together it is coming in the, uh, in the so protection uh, shutdown system is so important shutdown uh, function is so important it has to be highly reliable so tennis for minus seven in that range this two figures end this and this should fail only then shutdown uh, function fails emergency power supply system we have here because it's alternate diverse mode is available and then human factor for uh, uh, for any action for starting or some some action is anticipated and then decay heat removal uh, 5 into 10 to minus 6 you can see the figure so with this uh, quantification our um, the the figure uh, our cdf level comes to so you can see all our quantification is here and uh, our uh, frequencies are listed here and the cdf loop is 6.2 into 10 to minus 6 plant per area so that means we have till this slide we have we have done quantification at, at the system level quantification at the uh, inventory level and now uh, let us uh, discuss um, how the results to be interpreted 
So uh, now uh, anyone would like to know what is the contribution of loss of absolute power into the main CDF. So we have the uh, loop contribution 7 by 2 to 10 to minus 6 and then total CDF is uh, 2.25 uh, into 10 to minus 5. I have, I have taken this figure and uh, then, uh, then we got 13% contribution from loop. Okay. So that, that, that means loop event alone they are contributing 13 to 14% here. Now if I had done analysis on other events also, so 1.7 to minus that is major loca which is serious accident. It is contributing 3.23. You can see the the kind of uh, robustness that has been built into the system, and of course minor loca uh, it contributes 32 percent. But here we have a lot of time for corrective action and all that. So because leakage is happening at a very slow rate, uh, then anticipated transient 17 percent, loss of regulation incident 14 percent, almost equivalent to this. So. Uh, don't you think that we got a very good spectrum in terms of quantification and we have the total core damage frequency estimate here uh, 5.25 and this is all added together 100% they, uh, they make. So this provides a very effective mechanism for evaluation and if I have to present my results then uh, here without uh, getting into the background of Monte Carlo and all I have done wrong uh, but then for this is actually a result of a Monte Carlo simulation manually performed on a uh, computer uh, and it gives me a distribution that is lower bound and upper bound also 95% confidence interval and uh, that's how we I get the result <coughs> and uh, uh, of course loop is 7.2 and other things and all. So, uh, so, this is in nutshell we see our uh, result of the analysis uncertainty bound uh, on CDF level. You know. Now, uh, having done this exercise, the uh, documentation is one of the major, uh, major exercise in PRA. So, at uh, system level, uh, it, it should be each uh, system should be analyzed like class 3 system we saw. Then the report should be circulated and uh, uh, the, in the meantime comment sh should come uh, internal then external and then finally uh, all those comments incorporated uh, actually one PRA at least for at system level uh, not less than 15 to 20 uh, iterations then when it gets integrated with the inventory then also it is not less than something like 15 to 17 iteration and that is how we get the final result and go on working on the uh, review comment. Now system uh, analysis format. The system analysis format um, should be drafted a priori and it should be uh, having consistency and for each system there should be a checklist as I mentioned uh, that should define how the whole system from quality assurance and technical attribute of quality it has been handled. Then format of the main report. In the beginning itself, format of the main report should be made so that what the output will look like we, uh, we have an idea and quality attributes I so, uh, told you then three tire uh, review and each document should have or each analysis uh, like one system there are 10 system for each system there should be a control sheet that means how the uh, uh, revision uh, draft then revision 0, revision 1, revision 2, revision 3 they have evolved so that we can connect back. Uh, what are the modification they have been done uh, in the report. So, uh, so and th that is one of the point from P PRA that at every stage we are maintaining a sort of uh, 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 now, now if you ask me what is the insight that we got from the earth. So, one insight is total CDF is 5 into 10 to minus 5. Suppose if it is for the old plant and for old plant the international guideline I will not say criteria international guidelines are 1 into 10 to minus 4 and this result is 5 into 10 to minus 5. So what it means first it is less than the international guideline even if I include uh, the uh, this was a limited scope PRA. If I include other uh, events like shutdown, full power, low power and uh, other thing um, internal event, flood, seismic uh, you know. So uh, it should not cross and looking at this figure uh, other events may not uh, raise this level and it will uh, slightly increase even then we will we are in the range of uh, 10 to the minus 4. The second generation plant the core damage uh, expected to be I think it is not 5.25 uh, 
it has to be 1 into 10 to the power minus 4 so this uh, okay and then uh, the distribution of event in terms of cdf contribution so what we are seeing a beautiful way is that which event is contributing how much okay so uh, and there you will give whether the balance of plant uh, is there in terms of safety or not then uh, other other in, uh, insight from uh, level 1 pra limited scope is uh, further uh, the cd estimate can accommodate the full scope level 1 that we have discussed uncertainty bounds also can can be estimated uh, for this uh, and i'll show you in the next few slides that how around diesel generator the uncertainty bound is because you know for estimating the uncertainty bound um, uh, for the top event that is unavailability for class 3 power we have to have uncertainty bound uh, for uh, for component level dg level breaker level then only we'll have and that procedure will list out in the uh, next uh, next lecture uh, so this is what and these are directly uh, like if i to uh, if i have to work out what should be the test interval for our diesel generator set I have this failure data, I have this test interval, present test interval, I have the criteria. So I can estimate and I can suggest the next test interval. Um, suppose there is a question if a plant is uh, feeling that they are doing over testing of uh, class 3 system including DGs and all. Then probably a, a case study can be built how the unavailability uh, has uh, 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 increases or reduces because there is a component of time taken for testing. So, uh, and the uh, random failure, these two together, if we uh, state our unavailability and plot a graph, we'll know where the minimum is reaching. And that minimum time will say, this is the optimum time where you should go for testing. The so, uh, a PRA insight provided our actual, otherwise before PRA, this uh, testing frequency were either derived from expert opinion or derived from uh, other plants, similar plants, or they were discussed and uh, you know, but then you'll find it tends to be little arbitrary as the basis for this test interval um, in the safety document uh, uh, um, was was uh, desired that more clarity should have been there actually. Now, so these are some references and uh, for this. Uh, in respect of references, I would say there may be some overlap from one lecture to another lecture, but definitely for one week, the uh, all the references for that week can be located um, if, because they are sequentially uh, listed actually. With this, I end this lecture on quantification and uh, now we will go to the next lecture and last lecture that is fifth lecture on uh, where we will discuss uh, not advanced but uh, certain methods which were operating behind the scene in the software and then that is Monte Carlo simulation and second thing was uh, root cause analysis if I in this whole PRA what we get is the one area is left out is the root cause analysis so that we will discuss in the next lecture thank you